Welcome to the Fishnix webinar titled, Are Your Employees Falling Into the Fishing Trap? Learn How to Mitigate Risk of Spear Fishing. Today's presenters are Andres Tabares, Lead Consultant, Fishnix, and Peter Agnoletto, Chief Audit Executive and Senior Director, Par Pharmaceutical Companies. Andres brings with them proficiency in risk, controls, audit, confidentiality, integrity, and availability lending to a combination of business, operational, and technology expertise from a security risk perspective. He is certified CISSP and CISM. Andres earned his BS in management and master's, master's in IS. Peter has significant experience and expertise in developing and implementing enterprise risk management programs, risk and control analysis, identifying and analyzing key business risks, evaluating existing control structures and developing process to mitigate risk impact. Peter earned his BA in accounting and is a CPA. If you have any questions, please send them via the questions function in GoToWebinar and we will address them at the end of the presentation. If you would like a copy of the presentation, please send an email directly to Andres. His contact information will be given at the end. Thank you Andres and, Pre and Peter for presenting and I'll turn the webinar over to you now. Great, thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, this is Andre. So we're presenting here today on phishing. Spear phishing um, is one of the detailed items. Um, so I'm just going to start it off. Uh, you know, really, when we're talking about phishing, it's a social engineering exercise, or rather, a threat. Um, so really, what we're looking at, or what we're concerned about, is uh, the risk to our information assets, either as a company or from a personal standpoint. Um, one of the big items that we really want to concentrate on is the, what we call the human firewall. So that's really personnel and people doing the, the most they can or um, getting enough awareness uh, to really manage that threat. Uh, one of the things obviously this webinar is going to concentrate on is how can we prevent that both from a social and personnel standpoint as well as uh, electronic. And when we say electronic, we talk about electronic communications. Uh, things like email. Some of the things we want to cover is phishing along with the concept of social engineering. They both really go interchangeable. Uh, what is spear phishing? Uh, some of the examples, things that we're going to call as far as uh, fall and fail rates. Uh, from a client perspective, uh, Peter Agn Agnoletto is going to be uh, presenting a little bit about that. Um, how phishnix can help along with uh, recognizing phishing attacks. So if you see something come in, what is the attack, what does it look like, and what we can, what we can do about it uh, from a prevention standpoint. Um, and then just having some examples of what a uh, phishing email looks like. So to start out, social engineering. Um, when we talk about social en engineering, engineering, really the weakest link is people. Right, so the the idea here is, or or really what we're trying to do is increase the awareness. That that's really how we're going to strengthen um, the the risk of social engineering. Now, social engineering is considered a low tech method uh, where hackers try to obtain information. Um, it can be low tech, but it is getting a bit more high tech in terms of some of the phishing exercises that people are using. Um, some of the things that the social engineers try to do is try to prey on people, people, you know, their desire to help, tendency for people to trust others or to trust what comes into their email. Um, and then other things like greed, fear, moral obligation, guilt that um, either the attackers or people receiving the email may be subject to. Uh, social engineering, like I said before, is somewhat low tech, has human based factors as well as computer based. Uh, the human base would be uh, when people communicate with each other, right? So there's person-to-person -person interactions that could be through means of a phone call, through email, um, IMs. Then computer base, which is, I guess, really would be more the technical side of things, uh, things like emails, IMs, uh, transmissions. Now, specifically with respect to phishing, um, like I said before, phishing and social engineering are kind of an interchangeable terms. I guess we can say phishing is a type of social engineering technique. Um, really what's happening here is that these attackers, these fishers, they're trying to gain personal information uh, or sensitive information from either people in a company or just people's uh, 
sensitive background information, banking information, things like that, or things from a company or from an organization. Um, they're really masquerading as someone that they can trust, be it either from uh, an organizational standpoint, maybe your, your bank, maybe Facebook, maybe someone you do business with. So some of the threats, or th I guess you can call it threats or risks. Uh, we're really facing things like uh, disclosure of sensitive information, whether it's personal or organizational. Then there's loss of personal or private information. Uh, brand damage, so a company, someone in a company happens to give something out through a phishing attack, obviously we have the risk of some brand damage happening there. Identity theft, uh, valuable proprietary information, be it either organizational or personal, and then there's malicious software that can, uh, if someone were to click on a link or uh, execute something as part of an email threat from a phisher, um, well, we would see those things, uh, those types of things happen. So Spear phishing, what is it? It's a type of phishing, right? It's one of those things where we're seeing more detailed, more focused, uh, more focused things happen, right? So instead of an entire group or a large random set of people or organizations being hit, um, we're really seeing more individuals um, that, that are seeing the, these types of things come in. Now, the, as, part of, as part of the spear phishing uh, threat, phishers are going to try to uh, see what the weak links are with people um, or their process or technology. Um, they're going to address the recipient by name, obviously getting their name either through social media or whatever other information they can get from uh, the internet. Um, they'll use uh, certain uh, specific jargon and things that people are used to seeing or, or that are fairly technical. Uh, for an organization, and you know they, they they may refer to actual policy. So if someone finds out that you work for a specific company, um, they may just do some research on that company, look up some policies, look up some things um, that are happening, maybe some things in the news, and actually target uh, those people and and the fact that they know that they work for that organization. So here's an example of a specific spear phishing uh, email that would come in. What you'll see that's uh, unique about this is that the, the person is being referenced. Now, it may be Dear Mr. John, it may be the person's actual name. Uh, the point is that they know um, who, that com who that person represents, who that person is. Uh, whether it's spear phishing or whether it's phishing, there's normally a tendency for the attack to have some kind of uh, threat or some kind of uh, result if you do not click a link that's in the email and those are things that obviously we want to be careful with. We'll see some of those later on in the exercise uh, where we'll see, okay, what are the things that you want to look at? What are some of the things that you want to, uh, you want to avoid? Um, but this is, sort, this is in a way the setup of what a normal uh, phishing email looks like and we'll get into that a little bit more detail later on. So these are things, I guess you're seeing on the screen now, some, some examples within the last year, year and a half that we've seen come in. Uh, spear phishing aiming at SMBs, which are the small or mid-sized uh, businesses. Um, those are really being targeted a lot within the last year, year and a half. Uh, the Google scheme, which was uh, directed towards people's uh, Gmail accounts. Uh, most of us know about the Epsilon data breach as well as the RSA uh, breaches. And, uh, you know, so, so we're, since 2010 and 2011, we're seeing a lot of these, these things really on the rise. So there's a concept that as part of um, Fishnix, we, we work a lot with um, looking at what the fall and fail rates are out in the industry. A lot of the companies that we've done work with, uh, what we'll do is that we'll go in and, and um, you know, set up a scenario. <clears throat> Sorry, we'll set up a scenario and see, okay, uh, of the company's uh, personnel, who really falls for these types of attacks. And you'll see uh, on the bottom half of the screen, we have a percentages for the fall rate and fail rate. So the fall rate is everyone that's actually clicked on the link within the email and taken to the, to the phishing website. Uh, keep in mind that that website is not a real one. Um, that the fisher or spear fisher has sent out. So we're seeing there that an average percentage of 61% 61 pe 61 of people that have seen that come in have clicked on that link. 
sorry, let me go up a slide here. Then the fail rate is more the people that have clicked and have also entered in their personal information on that fake website. So we're seeing an average of about 21%. Um, the, the, the left and right are what's best, what's worst. Uh, for the fall rate, we've seen, okay, 41% have not actually clicked on, uh, on the links, 71% have. Um, so, so that's kind of how we've broken down. Then on the bottom, you'll see the actual uh, sets of the industry uh, that we have seen uh, you know, are really going into, are really falling for these scams. So you'll see things like games, you know, people falling for, oh, you know, they're, they're, there's a game that's being offered to me, or uh, shopping, you have a shopping spree that's uh, being offered to me. So, so I'll be very interested in those sort of things. So you'll see there from 1 to 10 what, what those are. Now I'll hand it over to Peter, who's going to take us through, from a client's perspective, some of the things that he's seen and some of the um, feedback that, that he can give on this. Peter? Okay, thanks, Andreas. Well, just to go over first, why do we decide to do this? Um, you know, when it was first presented to me, it wasn't something I thought about. But when you think about it, it made a lot of sense from the audit perspective, from my fiduciary responsibilities to the organization, as well as IT, security, HR, and senior management. And if you look back what Andreas said before about all the phishing incidents of the previous couple of years, you know, all the things that were coming out have uh, how the hackers got into the companies, it made sense to do this to test the aptitude of our people. Uh, in fact, we're in, you know, we're in the middle of our second assessment right now, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that later. Um, but as Andrea said earlier, as Audra says, you know, measuring the human firewall, whatever you want to call that, but the bottom line is at the end of the day, you send it out to your employees and you understand how many of them went and actually clicked on the link and visited the website. And then you find out how many of them not only visited, but provided information. So that's their fall and fail rate. But getting that information is critical to understanding what the, the action plans are. Andres, you can go to the next slide. Um, you know, so what, what do we want to do with this? I think, you know, the biggest thing here is to for us to assess the aptitude of our people. Um, you know, you're looking at these things happen all the time. Um, a couple of real ones happened right before we did our test last year. And basically what you want to do is then target your security awareness training to the people who actually clicked on it and provided information. Now we also provided uh, awareness training to every employee via our website, but a specific email went out to those and only individually to those who either clicked on it or clicked on it and provide information. So we try to do it shortly after the event so they could realize what happened, um, but it's important to reinforce it with training. And, you know, we're doing this again now for a couple of reasons. One, I want to benchmark, see if uh, we actually got better. And, I, uh, you know, this is the type of thing I'm not sure if you're going to actually see us getting better, but uh, this is something I plan on doing on, doing on a continual basis because uh, this is the type of thing you want to reinforce in people and, and test their awareness. And, and, you know, every time we come up with a, a way of sending an email and tricking people, uh, the hackers are finding new ways. So you have to change your methods, but doing it is just it makes prudent sense and it's... Uh, it's a cost-effective way of, of getting an aptitude test on where your employees stand and then training them. Um, so I think it's something that we plan on doing on, a, on an annual basis. Andreas? Thanks, Peter. So the, the next section here, we're focusing in on Fishnix. Uh, Fishnix, as I think was explained before, is a, um, it, you know, it, it's really a tool uh, really a solution that, you know, we've been using for educating people. Gaining awareness, education is really the primary goal, the primary tool here. Um, as, a, as a diagnostic solution, that's, that's really the first area that we focus in on, which is educating users, helping them identify what these phishing attacks are, what they look like, and then um, we, we go on to simulating attacks, right? So we'll, we'll come into the company, we'll come into the organization, uh, set up a scenario uh, like Peter was explaining before, and, and see really who falls for these 
types of attacks. And you know, we'll have things look uh, like what a real phishing attack is going gonna, is gonna to look like, uh, having the links, having maybe certain misspellings, and, and sending that out. Uh, the teaching moment, which is what, what comes after that, uh, that, that's really the part where we say, okay, this is what happened, and this is what you need to look out for. Um, and this is what you need to do or not do as a result of uh, receiving something like this. Uh, many clients across industries, you know, we've um, helped out with. Uh, Peter has been one of our uh, trusted partners or, or companies that we've uh, worked pretty closely with uh, on going through these. And, you know, so what we try to do is get through the social engineering, uh, try to uh, have people understand, okay, this is what phishing is all about. Um, I think the, the main overall area here is that this is not something that can be uh, solved just through technology, right? Um, you can have the greatest technology tools in place, but if there's an email that comes in, um, maybe I guess it doesn't get caught by spam filters or doesn't get caught by uh, virus filters. Someone clicks on a link, they're going to be taken to something, and if they give away their information, then um, you know, we're going to have certain things happen from there. So that that's really uh, some of the things that we try to uh, uh, try to assist with. So now, how to recognize some of these uh, phishing attacks? Uh, normally, uh, as part of uh, phishing attacks come in, we have generic greetings, we'll have a sender's address that may be fake. Um, there is some sense of urgency, so you'll see something like, oh, you know, if you don't provide, if you don't provide your information now, your account's going to get canceled, or your bank um, assets or, or account is going to be in jeopardy. Um, the, the emails will look similar to something that's internal, something that uh, people will see as part of their um, account information, whether it's uh, banking or, or other things. Um, there will be some misspellings, uh, although fishers and spear fishers are being a little bit more careful of that these days, but the minute you see uh, misspellings and some things with grammar, you know it's pretty much a, a phishing attack. And some fake fake web links. Um, there is some improvement that fishers have been doing around this, and we'll talk later a little bit more about um, what you should look out for in terms of what not to do, but also what organizations are doing uh, presently um, as a result of all the phishing threats uh, that you know that they want their users to be careful with. So some of the common phrases and things that we see uh, as part of the phishing or spear phishing is something like verify your account, right? So you'll see that something that comes into your email saying, um, we want you to verify either your company um, account credentials or banking credentials. Uh, if you don't log in and provide your information now, you're probably going to lose um, either account access or certain uh, other critical um, uh, things that you can do with your, with your information. You've won the lottery. So obviously people see something where they won a lottery and they get very excited and they want to reply back and obviously be part of that. There would normally be some date or some urgency that if you don't reply back, you're going to um, not have the chance to win thousands or millions of dollars, right? So obviously a lot of people are, are very drawn to that. If you don't respond within 48 hours, your account will be closed. So normally if someone knows you work for a certain organization, you send in an email looking like you came in from IT security, information security, or IT, or the help desk, and if you don't respond, um, then your account will be closed. Someone who's not aware of this sort of threat and doesn't call the help desk or doesn't call their IT department will click the link and provide the information, and then all of a sudden they've been prey to, uh, to the phishing attack. Another one is Dear Valley Customer. So as part of a lot of phishing attacks, there will be a mass, e mass amount of emails that go out. You'll see things like Dear User, Dear John, with, or using common names. Um, so a lot of the phishing attacks really happen uh, in, with, with that sort of method. The other one, click link below, gain access to your account, or click here. Um, there will be some exciting offer, something like we spoke about before. But the key here is that there will be some HTML formatting. Um, so that's where we have the links embedded into the email. And once you click on that, then you're taken to the, um, uh, to the fake website. So now the question here is this e email legitimate? So just by looking at it, you'll see that the from 
you know, maybe so, something that's spoofed, something that's that really doesn't uh, doesn't work. Um, the company name may be misspelled. There may be something after the company name. There may be uh, a subdomain within the um, within the email uh, server. Uh, I guess uh, where it came from. And you'll see also in the actual body of the email, there's going to be uh, some sense of urgency, right? So if you look further below, there's okay, there's a warning uh, that's being sent out. If you do not send your username or password, then uh, your account's going to be disabled or it's going to be uh, terminated. Some prevention techniques. So how can you avoid being a victim? Uh, be very cognizant of the type of threat. Um, obviously, we know this is social engineering. We know that this is a phishing attack, so um, beware of uh, things that are coming and looking at things like the from or certain things within the email. Um, unsolicited emails, treat them with suspicion so you don't know where the email is coming from. Um, it's an unknown, unknown individual, an organization you've never heard of before. Uh, be careful with that. The email attachments, anything that comes in with an email attachment that's not from an internal part of the organization or somewhere that you've never seen before, you need to treat that with caution. You really need to treat any email attachment that comes in with caution, um, especially if you don't know where it's coming from. Those attachments normally have uh, viruses or malware that are um, associated with them. Uh, something that uh, I, I guess if a source, if you don't know if it's a legitimate email source, if it's not digitally signed, if you don't see a secure link or SSL as part of the um, as part of the website, then obviously be very careful with that. And lastly, if you guys have seen as part of this whole slide here, the human firewall. So, uh, with training, with um, webinars like what we're doing here, we're really stressing the human firewall. So this is about awareness. It's about training. Um, really be aware of, the, uh, of emails coming in. Now, the one thing that I was mentioning before is that we'll look, what a lot of organizations are doing right now, um, especially banking and um, you know a lot of um, organizations that work with people personally, is when they send an email to people, so let's say something like Citibank or Chase or HSBC or any other um, uh, banking or any other kind of organization like that, um, what they do, what they're doing now is that they're not sending any links out. They're telling you, you know, you need to check on your account, but please go to either city.com or whatever, whatever the um, whatever the banking URL is, and log in, and you'll see uh, something that you need to update or update your credentials. But they will not send you a link that says click here and. Um, log in and, and uh, you know provide your information or, or, or change things around. So do's and don'ts. Um, you know ensure that it's a secure website. Normally you'll see an HTTPS or SSL on the top uh, and on the URL. Um, make sure that's a secure session. Like I said, HTTPS. Uh, make sure that it's SSL. Um, what some of these uh, phishing attacks is they'll just send something that's random. It'll be a weird URL. They'll have a link and obviously it won't be uh, a secure link. Um, don't fill out any forms that are in the emails or any forms that if you click on a link it takes you to a form. Uh, make sure that you have the, uh, the latest antivirus, the latest patches and, and firewall set up. Um, as part of an organization, this is normally taken care of by T. But if you're if you're running your own uh, machine, obviously if you're on the internet um, on your own, make sure that these are set up. That's the technology part of part of things. If an organization or you do not have the latest patches and, and antivirus software set up, and the links get through, then it's really up to you uh, to be careful and not click on those things and not provide any personal information. Uh, make sure that the browser is up to date. Like I said before, the patches are set up and applied. And uh, you know, if, if you see anything like that come in, um, you know, just contact your contact your help desk. Uh, do something about it. Let them know that these things are coming in, and other people may actually fall prey to it. Some of the don'ts: don't provide personal information. Uh, you know, uh, we we see that. Uh, when things come in, whether it's the help desk or whether it's uh, IT or other parts of the organization, 
we know that they are not going to be asking for your password and your credentials and your social security number. That they're just not going to be doing that. So don't provide that information and you see it come in, report it to the help desk. Don't click links in an email or instant message. A lot of times when you're clicking a link, it may actually launch uh, some type of malicious software. Don't provide any information on a page uh, that might turn up as, you know, may actually launch a pop-up window. So if you see a pop-up window come up, close it, report it to the help desk, or see what you can do to maybe turn off the, the pop-up windows. That's normally the right thing to do. See something coming from an unknown source, don't click on the link, don't loud, don't download uh, things that are being that you're being told to download from, because that may be malicious code, maybe a virus, and maybe a Trojan. Never provide your password or personal information, especially if this is a social engineering that may be over a phone um, or may come in through an email. So let's spot the phishing email. Now we're seeing here there's certain spelling errors, maybe one or two. There's certain things they're saying that you've done recently, whether you've traveled, um, I guess you haven't, and you obviously should know that, so uh, those are things to uh, keep aware of. And if you notice the, the, the status bar or the URL link, it doesn't look, it, it looks weird, right? And maybe there's an IP address in there, maybe there's um, s some kind of um, uh, email that, that's, or something that just doesn't look right. The, the best thing to do is really to go to whatever it is that, you know, whatever the organization it is, is that you deal with, whether it's uh, your, your banking information, whether it's, uh, you know, some kind of service that you've signed up for, whether it's Facebook or whatever it might be, go directly to their website, log in, um, and see what's going on. Uh, you know, don't, don't do it through the email. Don't, don't click on those links. That's probably the best, well, it is the best thing to really do. Um, so like I said before, what a lot of organizations are doing now is they know that this is happening. They know that there's phishing attacks. They know that, are, that there's people out there that they're going to see, uh, you know, certain things come in from um, either their banks or their social media or maybe even uh, where they graduated from, right? If a fisher or someone that's launching one of, the, one of these attacks, let's say, let's take an example, right? He, he or she goes to your Facebook account, sees that you graduated from a certain school, knows when you graduated, maybe knows your birth date, and maybe knows where you work. All of a sudden they know, okay, well, if I launch a phishing attack, and I, and I send it from an email where I can spoof, and when I say spoof, that means you know I fake the email address that it's coming from, and I ask you, okay, you need to provide this information, otherwise we're going to close down your account. And maybe they'll put in something like, well, we know that you, that you are who you are, and you can know that we, we, you know we're legitimate because this is your birth date, or this is the year you're you know, you graduated uh, from school. And all of a sudden that makes you feel comfortable, you click on the link and you provide your information. And all the person did was, all the, all the fish, the, the fisher did was go to your Facebook account, find out certain information about you, they spoofed their email address and sent you that, that email and all of a sudden you were concerned and now they have your information. So those are things that you really um, want to be careful about. And I think that's pretty much it. Unless uh, we're gonna see uh, Michael or, or anyone there if you're, you're watching the uh, the panel. Yeah. If there's any questions that have come in, I'm sure we'll open for that. Great, thanks, Andres and Peter for uh, presenting. Um, go ahead and uh, the, to the attendees, go ahead and ask your questions in the the questions area of the control panel, and uh, we'll get them answered. Our first question, uh, do you also provide services pertaining to social engineering calls, i.e. simulate social engineering attacks via calls? Yeah, that is something, you know, obviously what, what we've been talking about here, phishing and spear phishing, is one part of social engineering. 
Um, there, there are other things that we can simulate and obviously work with people on it from, a, from an awareness standpoint. Um, so what we see from a social engineering perspective is people like admins for, let's say, an ex a top executive at a company receiving a call saying, oh, you know, you, you need to provide me um, the email and password for, um, you know, your boss, otherwise we're going to have to um, stop his credentials or, or you know, somehow cut that. So those, to answer your question, yeah, it, it is something that we can work with people from an awareness standpoint. Um, we can even set up scenarios where that happens, maybe do some testing, uh, take a certain population within a, an organization or a company where, you know, we do that sort of thing. Obviously, it's, it's fairly sensitive, so we'd have to, you know, have the agreements on that, but yeah, that, that is something that we can certainly arrange. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, next question. Since users are normally the weakest link, what do you recommend for analyzing their behavior and training around phishing? So, you know, some of the things that Peter and I talked about earlier, um, it, it's really around uh, gauging what people's tendencies are going to be. Right, so uh, take take for uh, take for example one of the things that Peter was talking about, where you know we've we've gone into or where we go into an organization, um, we we set up a scenario where we'll send uh, we'll send out a um, a set of emails, um, maybe to a certain population, and, and this could be emails, it could be phone calls, like like we said before, either way, but you know so we'll we'll see that population and we'll send out uh, that communication. So if in terms of a phishing exercise, what will set up a scenario, people will receive this email, they'll see a link, and really gauge from there where A, they, they click on the links or they do something with the email, and then B, uh, when they provide their personal information. So that's really the, the chance that we get to gauge uh, what people are doing uh, and what kind of information they're, they're, they're giving away. Um, the second part to that is where we launch our awareness or training, and that's where you know we get to educate people. You know, this is happening. These are things that you should look out for. Um, you know, how to avoid those things, the do's and don'ts, like we saw before, and really go through that uh, that entire exercise. So I think both the gauging what people are doing as well as uh, following up in the training. Um, has been shown, you know, we've seen to be uh, very effective in a lot of areas. So, Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Andres. Uh, won't strong automated perimeter controls stop phishing attacks? Normally they should. So, like I said before, having strong spam filters, virus uh, filters, things where, you know, uh, I guess links will not be let through. A lot of these filters, what they do is they look for things like links. They look for things uh, like attachments. Um, those are larger organizations. Where you, you saw before when we were talking about SMBs, the smaller mid-sized businesses, or even personal accounts, someone sitting at home that may not ha have those things set up. Um, the answer to that a, a lot of times will be no. So these things will get through one way or another. Uh, some of them will get caught at the firewall for large organizations, but really it all comes down to awareness. It comes down to the human firewall and how we can uh, really avoid that uh, when we see things come in. And you know, it, it's really a matter of us being able to spot or being able to you know be aware of okay. Uh, as an example, uh, you know, I shouldn't be giving out my personal information when I click on this link, or I shouldn't, as a result of this communication, then give out my personal information. And and like I said before, you know, what a lot of large organizations, or really what a lot of organizations like banks and and people we do business with are trying to do now is not send anything like that out. So I guess the bottom line really comes down to awareness is, you know, just not giving out personal information as a result of these uh, communications. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, next question. What's the most effective control against the spear phishing attack? Yeah, I think um, I, I may point it several times. It's really awareness and training. Um, again, going back to the concept of the human firewall. 
we can do as much as we can from a technical standpoint, setting up things on our fire in our technical firewall, you know, avoiding uh, the, the the links coming through, avoiding the attachments coming through. Uh, but when things actually do get through, uh, more from a uh, person not sitting within their office at a larger organization or even the smaller or, or mid-sized uh, businesses, it, it really comes down to uh, awareness and training. So really keeping up to date with, with, with what's happening. We have plenty of material on that, obviously. Uh, like Peter mentioned before, uh, keeping on top of these things, doing these awareness, doing, doing these uh, simulated sessions on a periodic basis uh, really helps out a lot. Um, because, you know, what, what we try to do is send something out, let's say uh, we're simulating an attack, is simulate something that would happen today. Uh, so th that's really what, what, what I think people have, um, have really gained a lot of knowledge from, as well as the awareness exercises. Uh, what do you uh, what do you recommend to be done in the event of someone uh, someone falling for a phishing scam? So obviously, uh, we know that these these things happen, uh, may happen, or will happen. Um, the incident response to this really should be something that goes along with um, an organization's or even a person's um, incident response process for other things, right? So. It falls into, because really what this comes down to is loss of data, uh, loss of personal information, organizational information, something that's valuable. You're losing it as a result of this. That's really what the incident is about. So if as part of the incident response process, you have something where either you contact your help desk, um, you contact IT, you let people know that this has happened, um, as a result of that, they'll be either, well, not either, they should be both uh, technical solutions as well as uh, human and awareness uh, solutions, so training that comes after that. But really it starts with uh, the incident response. Who do I contact? You know, obviously as soon as it happens, you should contact uh, your help desk or IT and do something about it. Um, I think from a personal standpoint, the, the, the best thing to do is, uh, I guess, contact the organization that you've been working with. If something comes in that asks for your banking information and you happen to click on the link and provide it, go to your uh, either bank organization that's asking for that and, and let them know what happened. Uh, you know, th th there's, th there's certain things that, uh, from an awareness standpoint, that we well, not certain things. There's really a lot of things, but from an awareness standpoint, that's really the key here, um, is really the human firewall. So if you're not part of a large organization that has all these filters set up, uh, make sure that we have uh, awareness uh, set up as part of this. Uh, which country has the largest number of attacks? Right now we've seen um, a combination between the U.S., China, Russia, uh, certain parts of the U.K., so there is plenty of, uh, <laughs> you know, th this is happening everywhere. I guess where the question comes down to, where do the attacks originate from and who's receiving them? Uh, the countries I just mentioned before really fall into both those realms. Uh, we, we have obviously a large population of users and a large population of attackers on both ends, but uh, th those would really be it. I don't have the specific uh, statistics, but uh, those would fall into that category. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any more questions. Um, there's uh, Carl's uh, contact information, um, as well as Fishnik's contact information, both phone numbers and email addresses on the screen right there. Uh, should you have any questions after this webinar, feel free to give them a call or uh, drop them a note uh, via email. Um, thank you both for presenting today, and thank you to the attendees. No problem. Hey, hey, Mike, I have um, one other piece of information here. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. If people are interested in more stats or statistics on some of the things like what you just asked, you can go to APWG. That's A as in Apple, P as in Peter, W as in work, G as in gorilla.org. 
uh, you can find more statistics and more things happening there. Okay, great. Thank you for that information. And uh, again, thank you to the attendees for attending today. All registrants are going to, um, well, what we've done is we've recorded this webinar, so we're going to put it up on Algis' website at uh, www.algis.com. That's www.aujas.com. And that should be up in the next couple of days, so feel free to uh, rewatch it or forward it to any of your colleagues or friends. Uh, thank you again for presenting, and have a great day. Thank you.